Home sweet home. How's everybody doing today? Hell yeah. I'm so glad all of you are here. Heck yeah, Big Ty Dog, Boo Cuzzo, Kale Moore. I'm happy to be here, guys. Uh, I just I just did a big milestone last week, uh, Sunday. I did my first 30-minute set. Uh, but I don't, you don't have to, I, honestly, you don't have to clap because I feel like this is a bigger accomplishment, uh, hosting this mic. I'm real happy for that. Yep. Will told me it's the longest running mic in Richmond. And Will knows history. Does know history. Uh, everybody knows this bathroom, you can use it, but we'll make fun of you. Watch. Ah, oh, you old fuck. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It took a. I was 22 when I went in there. <laughs> and now he's 23. Oh, right. Uh, my name's Patrick. I'll be your host for the evening. I didn't know my ethnicity growing up uh, because I don't know my dad. Uh, and my mom. I look like DJ Khaled, but my mom looks like Paula Deen. Um, I didn't know my ethnicity. I used to tell people I was Puerto Rican until I got beat up by a Puerto Rican for not being Puerto Rican and saying that I was Puerto Rican. Um, I'm killing downstairs, dude. I'm killing downstairs. Hell yeah. Uh, I was happy. Everybody like would tell me they don't know. They're like, what, what are you? You're not white, dude. What are you? And I was so happy when I found out that I'm 35% Portuguese. I was like, fuck yeah, dude, I'm Latino. I'm Latino. Uh, then I found out where Portugal is. Nope, still white, still white. Um, a little bit of Irish. That stands for Irish, I was black. Uh, let's see. I don't know anything about history. Will knows all the history. I don't know any of it. I don't know any generals. All I know is, uh, General Lee, General Washington, and General Sos, and that's my favorite. Um, I don't know any flags. I was watching the Olympics, and I'm like, what is the green flag? And my friend's like, that's Brazil. I'm like, that's crazy. I dated a Brazilian once. All she had was red flags. Um, then it made me realize I only know three flags. Um, the ISIS flag, the gay pride flag, and the American flag. And those are my favorite in that order. Uh, no one's a thinker. Uh, um, I was uh, overhearing a uh, conversation between some old ladies talking about how they spent all their Kohl's cash over the weekend and realized that I shop at the same place as old ladies. Uh, this outfit is pretty sick. I bought it with my mom's coal cash. Uh, all right, this is a, a cool place. This is home sweet home. We know it's a rowdy place. Um, I met someone a little earlier. I hope she's not listening. Uh, she came out the bathroom. She's like, uh, she's like, it's a sad day. I just had my 12th friend die from fentanyl. And I'm like, damn, you should probably get some new friends. <laughs> well, actually, you have to get some new friends. You, know? <laughs> you don't have a choice. Uh, the internet, the internet can be toxic, guys. Uh, everybody fights on the internet. I don't like it. I uh, used to, I remember at one time I had like a whole bunch of super woke people fighting a whole bunch of super racist people. So I deleted everybody. Uh, but recently I added back a lot of super woke people and I'm working on adding my family back. Yeah, uh, uh, you ever send somebody a, like a meme or something and instantly regret it? Like um, I sent my friend this like super offensive meme recently, and like instantly I regretted it because he's blind and uh, I don't think he's gonna get that one. But I I looked in Instagram and it said seen by Noah. Put <laughs> some bullshit. I know he ain't see that shit. I did not feel seen. Uh, Y'all seen this uh, this new trend on uh, the internet, Demir? Y'all seen that? Demir, it's a new trend. Um, the thing about these trends is they make it to Hopewell, all right? And uh, if you've never been to Hopewell, it's just one big trailer park. It's one big trailer park. 
And then you have these uh, trailer park girls like posting like, ooh, very mindful, very demure. I'm like, bitch, did you even look in demure before you posted that shit? I'm killing them. I'm getting them warm for you, Mike Mar. I'm getting them warm for you. Are we excited for the uh, first uh, woman president of the United States? We excited? Are we voting for Kamala? Mukazo didn't even clap, man. I know he's not listening. He's the biggest black activist on this side of the Mississippi. I'm excited for a woman president. I can't, I can't wait to see how she runs a White House from the kitchen. I mean, that's going to be... That's gonna, no, I'm just kidding. I don't expect her to cook. But if anybody's going to give this country a deep cleaning, she's the one to do it. Uh, I'm going to be vulnerable with you guys, man. Like, sometimes I worry about being labeled homophobic, right? And this is crazy because uh, one of my best friends is bisexual. And there, he, even he thinks I'm homophobic because I'm afraid that something gay might happen. Um, I mean, there's chemistry between us. We, uh, but I don't get it. Like, uh, people are arachnophobic, right? Spiders didn't do anything to anybody. It's not like I'm going to be at home like, Hey, babe, there's a gay guy in the bathroom. Come kill it. That's funny as shit, guys. You guys uh, now I'm really worried about... No, no. Now my uncle, you can do, you can do, you can laugh at anything, dude. Uh, now my uncle, he's definitely afraid of getting bit by a gay guy. Uh, all right, guys. <laughs> Silver, delete this shit. Uh, no, I'm just uh, now my uncle, though, man, I remember the first time that I ejaculated. It was at my uncle's house. It wasn't like that. Um, yeah, I found my uncle's Playboy magazines, and as soon as I found them, I heard a voice in my head. It said, go to the bathroom. But he was just outside with the dog. Um, I went to the bathroom, I ejaculated, my ears popped. I got a little taste of iron in my mouth. My crown chakra opened. And then I heard a voice that said, good boy. But it was just my uncle standing right behind me. Um, I'll never forget the first time I jacked off, it was 9-11. That was for the people downstairs. Um, yeah, it was 9-11. Can you imagine ejaculating for the first time September 11, 2001, and then going into the living room to see your whole family crying? That was me. I imagine I have like a doppelganger out there that like ejaculated for the first time on August 6, 1945 in a bunker in Hiroshima, Japan and went upstairs and everybody was gone. If that happened, you would think you had a superpower. You'd be in school getting picked on. You'd be like, bitch, I'll do it again. I'll. All right, guys, that's my opening set for my Saturday Night Live monologue. Are you guys ready to have a good show tonight? All right, your first comic, you might have seen him uh, from coming out of the bathroom, taking a shit. Be careful in there, Ben. Uh, guys, your first comic, great guy. The first time I ever met him was here, and I'm glad he's here tonight, guys. Give it up for Mike Marr, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Whoa. Yeah, this is way past my bedtime. Yeah. I'm married. Is anybody married anymore? I don't know. Is that still a thing? Well, at least I've still got a sense of humor about it. <laughs> my marriage. Now that's been a ride. A roller coaster, a roller coaster in fact. And you know those photos they take on the roller coaster? Uh, when you're on the steepest part of the ride? And that's the same face I make when my wife tells me that she's gonna have vegan meatloaf for dinner. Yeah. 
Now that I'm retired, I got a new old man smell. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a natural thing. I, I saw it on Wikipedia. Yeah. It's uh, a delicate combination of Old Spice, Ben Gay, and poverty. And you know what's weird is my grandson's not old enough to uh, talk now. But when he gets near me, he gives me this facial expression that says it all. Einstein, old man, you stink. Yeah, can you believe that? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I picked up a bad habit from my wife. She's so darn organized. She talks with a list. Hence the list. Got it? Got it? Yeah. And now she says I'm a rebel without applause. And that seems to be working tonight. <laughs> yeah. Laugh. Can you believe that? Yeah, she can tell when I'm drunk because I slur my farts. <laughs> yeah. Is that love or mind control? Whatever it is, it's weird. Yeah, and I used to save old farts in a jar. Yeah, I stopped when I became one. Now I may be a rebel without applause, but I'll tell you this, I'm handy around the house. That's what I, at least that's what I call it when I'm checking my equipment. And my wife, she just calls it jerking off. I came home last night, took a shower, walked into the bedroom naked. And my wife pointed and said, you ought to put that little bit in your act. So I did. Yeah, a truly good wife is the most precious treasure a man can find. I say it's almost as good as finding spare change between the couch cushions. Young folks today, I can tell you the only thing non-binary about me is my bank account. <laughs> yeah, hey, and this confirms I'm old. But I don't have the balls to tell any jokes about testosterone. So, uh, seriously, I've been chasing cool most of my life. But I still don't know what it is. As a three-year-old, cool was watching a TV western called Have Gun, Will Travel. Yeah, I had the whole get up. Cowboy hat, boots, logo t-shirt. Holsters with cap guns and my trusty Wonder Rocking Horse. I rode every day, all day. Drove my parents crazy. Yeah. I was having such a blast, I didn't even want to stop to have my diaper changed. Same as right now. Pew, 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 pew. All right, folks, my name is Mike Moore. You've been great. Thank you very much. Give it up for Mike Moore, everybody. Another comedian you might see if you ever go to Kohl's. All right. Your next comic naked is a hot piece of ass. Give it up for Will Miner, everybody. Shit. Ah, Jesus Christ, when you're on the other side of it, this is horrible. Is this what I fucking sound like? Holy shit! Ah. Can you imagine having sex with me? Yes. I'm close. <laughs> oh, keep it going.
going for Patrick. As for mentioned, my name is Will Miner. I know everything about history. I know everything about history. Someone asked me a history question. Who's the next president? Fentanyl. <laughs> See, it's easy. History's fun. It's made every day. You just gotta make it up as you go. You know what I'm talking about, Rojava. Come on now. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Free Palestine. We went there. Thank you, Silver. Oh, I ruined the room. I brought everything down again. Bring it back up, Will. Bring it back up. Oh boy, I know. I don't need to get. Uh, how do we need to get political off the top, everybody? But boy, howdy. Anybody else think that Kamala was just biding her time? Hey, come on now. It's an LBI. Grab it, bud. It's a good time. Oh my goodness, do you guys know, uh, I've been watching, oh man, have you guys been watching this presidential race? I tell you, it's a tight race, it's a pretty, who do we want to win, who do we like? No one, I like this crowd. I like your energy, audience, you are as enthusiastic about politics as I am. I can take that energy. I don't know, do you all know who Donald Trump is? Do you all know who Donald Trump is? For those of you that don't know, that is the former... Host of the Celebrity Apprentice, yes. Host of the Celebrity Apprentice, that's my warm-up. <laughs> that's my vocal warm-ups. Host of the Celebrity Apprentice, that's what I should do instead of red leather, yellow leather. I don't know. I realized something horrifying about Donald Trump. I realized something terrifying about that man. You want to know what I realized about him? Me and him dance the same way. <laughs> that guy totally stole my move. When I saw him doing this, I was like, God damn, that's all I've got. Just jerking off a million dicks. Just constantly jerking off a million dicks. Just jerking, jerking, jerking. And it's not his fault. It's not our fault, white people. We don't know how to dance. It's not our fault, white people. We can't blame ourselves. Look at our culture, for God's sake. Square dancing. Line dancing. And don't make me bring up the chicken dance. I guarantee you, I can make somebody clap if I go... We can't resist it! Even the black guy! Oh, sorry, John. <laughs> that joke was more about silly white people, but... <laughs> we can all be silly tonight. We can all be silly together. Oh, boy. Huh, speaking of silly, oh, boy. Premature ejaculation. <laughs> Audience, anybody have to deal with that? Premature ejaculation? Anybody ever have to deal with that? <laughs> one honest person, one real person up front. Thank you, Chris, you are brave. <laughs> I don't have, I don't actually suffer from premature, eja premature ejaculation, I have immature ejaculation. <laughs> Every time I'm finished, I'm just like, ew, gross, cooties, get off me, ew, girls are gross. <laughs> See, it's fun, it's easy, we're having a good time. Oh my goodness, seasons are changing, everybody, we're going into fall, everybody ready for fall? Hell yeah, my man's ready for fall right here, he's already got his hood up, you're cold as fuck. It only dropped like 10 degrees, friend. I don't know. They have that thing, uh, seasonal depression. Like, you know when the season changes, some people have... Anybody here of seasonal depression? Hell yeah, the same guy that premature ejaculates. God damn it, Chris, you are my rock. <laughs> I love you, buddy. No, seriously, if anybody here of seasonal depression, I can totally relate to you. I also suffer from seasonal depression. But actually, I found a good way to beat my seasonal depression. Y'all want to know how I beat seasonal depression? I'm always depressed. Come on, take that, Big Pharma. I don't need your pills. I can be sad by myself. I'm getting older, everybody. I'm getting older. I get out of here this one. I'm getting older. I know I'm getting older. Anybody else getting older? Clap it up. I'm getting old. Hey, those people in the back are never getting older. They are immortals. They will never die. Oh, but I know I'm getting older because I don't burp anymore. I just go, Arr. Anybody else have to deal with that? I was like, Grr. like I was at a, I recently went to a California pizza kitchen and the wait, our server walked by and I went, Grr. and she stopped and she literally put her hand on my shoulder and was like, sir, are you okay? Do you have a pre, like a medical condition? And I had to look this sweet woman in the eye and say, no, I just drank my ginger ale too fast. <laughs> all right, thank you all so much. I'll think of a different soda for that joke. Get Patrick Logan back up here. Love that guy. Look at that guy, man. He does not shop at Kohl's. Sorry. Uh, he does not shop at all. Uh, 
Guys, your next comic. Are you ready for him? You ready for him? Your next comic. Yeah. Your next comic just came in the door hot. He's ready to go. He's so ready to go. He was like, no, don't put me next. No. And I'm like, hey, are you guys ready? Chris Simple, everybody. Chris Simple. Yeah. Uh, this is what this mic would be cool or be if uh, Jacob was taller, a lot cooler. Yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, we're gonna fall in that depression kind of thing. Depression. Give it up for depression. I just signed a. I extended another year in depression. I signed another year into the army. Give it up for that. It's the. the so I get to have like the benefit of that is uh, I get to have another year of like people saying thank you for your service. I don't like to let people down though because I don't want to tell them that I am in the army because if I tell them that they're like oh you didn't join the Marines. It's like having T-Mobile when there was Verizon. Anyways guys it's like I hate meeting Marines all the time because Marines always big dig you. They're always like oh so you're in the army. You didn't join us. You're kind of a pussy. I die for my country first and I'm like cool I'll live for mine first. That's always a fun joke to tell them guys. I joined the army at a part-time level because that's what I believe in protecting a country. I like my months and I like my time. Anyways guys, uh, I'm an automotive YouTuber and I go to the gym a lot and there's two things that correlate. People think all the time. Having a modified car and going to the gym gets you a lot of women. It really doesn't. It gets you more men than you'll ever need. Guys always come up to me, man, hey man what's, uh, what is your max? What's your, what's your setup on your car? But when a girl tells you that your car, your modified car looks like that basic rental V6 car, it crushes you. Cause that's like telling a woman that she uses cover up, uh, yeah, what is it? What is it girl cover, what is that, uh, that cover up girl? Yeah, cover girl, that's it, cover girl on your eyebrows. That ruined the joke. <laughs> Uh, guys, I always take chances. I love taking chances. I take chances by uh, leaving the toilet seat down so when I wake up in the middle of the night, I go take a chance and see if I peed into the toilet or on the seat. Do I have to clean up something in the morning yet? I don't know. I take chances. We're taking chances on new jokes tonight. You ever seen a couch in the wild? Drive in Richmond, you see a couch on the sidewalk, somebody just fucking left, or a couch in the woods or something, or Facebook Marketplace. There's always a story. I always love bringing home a couch because it's like bringing home a dog. They're bigger than you thought they were. They're not going to fit in your apartment. So, when you bring home a couch, you're like, did it come from a loving family or an abusive family? Was this couch taken care of, or was it fucked like a dog? <laughs> I don't know, we're still working on that one, but couches in the wild are crazy, guys. Uh, so are step parents, because you either want to fight your step parents or fuck them. You're either beating on your mom or fighting your dad. And you're just like, when is it my turn? These are a lot of white jokes. <laughs> oh, guys, let's see, let's see. There's so many secrets in here. Uh, does anybody know what a gold star family is? Okay, so you know what a Gold Star family is? So, I was a Gold Star family when my parents were together when I was in elementary school. I didn't have to lose a limb or die to be part of that. I got gold stickers from my teachers for having good grades. That's a fun one. Google that one and you'll get it when you're on the way home. You're like, ah, that's what it means. Um, I, uh, I hate drinking with people all the time that are so negative because sometimes if I drink a little too much more than I usually do, they're like, you're too drunk to walk. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm driving home. Uh, anyways, guys, how much time do I have left? A minute. Hell yeah, a minute. Uh, you ever heard rubbing shoulders with rich people, like networking? Rubbing shoulders with, you're, you know, you're an average or poor person and rubbing shoulders kind of puts you into that trance of wanting to do better. I think uh, people like uh, Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby missed that because they're rubbing pills together and girls drinks or, or rubbing dicks to make people famous. I guess not. Okay. Uh, we'll get out of here on this. The Epstein list. The Epstein list is out. Did you hear? <laughs> Donald Trump is going to release more of the Epstein list. I'm still shocked that Stephen Hawking is on that list because he was a theorist in black holes and then he became a theorist in underage holes. Oh. 
That is my time. As he would say, I, actually, I don't know what he would say. He's dead. Okay. Keep it going for Chris Simple, everybody. Well, they didn't like you, Chris. <laughs> uh, your next comic. I'm so happy she's here. If you... Uh, I'm very glad you're here. Um, she just came and popped in on the list. The only female energy you're going to get tonight until way later. I'm really happy that she's here. It looks really good for my reputation. Um, they don't all hate me. Just the ones that know that I was doing this. No, I'm just kidding. I don't. Silver, delete this shit, dude. All right. For the people at home, there's nobody in this room. I'm just talking to myself. Practicing. There's a mirror right here. I'm very glad this person's here, guys. Give it up for Mallory Brown. Come on up here. I'm a girl. Hi. Where do you post these? YouTube. Cool. So I'm so excited to be here. I've always wanted to be a comic. Um, since I was like 16. And I remember like doing research on comedians to figure out like, how do they get here? What do they do? And I noticed there's almost like this criteria of like fucked up shit happening to them. And being young and 16, I was like, damn, nothing bad has happened. And then my stepdad killed himself, so I'm in. I did it. Um, so I'm Jewish. Kind of, yeah. Thanks. Uh, no one's really on our team right now. We're kind of like in the... We're a little bit in trouble right now. Uh, but I grew up with a Jewish mother, and she puts the Israel in Jewish guilt is real. She, um, hey guy. And <laughs> she, um, to this day, we got in a fight when I was like a senior in high school, and I know I still look like a senior in high school, but I am 22. And basically, to give backstory, I was dating a guy whose parents knew my mom from high school. And I didn't know that my mom didn't like his mom. But I opened up to his mom about problems my mom and I were having. And, you know, like I talked to her, I opened up to her. And somehow we got back to my mom that I opened up to his mom. And she, like, to this day would be like, you know, it's like really fucked up. You, like, opened up to her, like, you know, it's just like, you don't know, it's like, did you like her better than me? And it's like, no, Mom, I did not like Karen better than you. Um, that was a confusing story, but let's see. Oh, I was watching the news, and someone died. It was a local girl, and you know when they do that thing where it's like, she was the best. She was so sweet. Everyone loved her. I want someone so bad. Like they like the, it's the news reporter. And she's like, I'm going to the community of the dead girl. And they're like interviewing someone. And they're like, what did you think of her? And they're like, kind of a bitch, to be honest. She's like, kind of a bitch. Like, can you imagine? Did that make sense? Did that make sense? You know what I mean? I'm making sure I said it right. Um, but I think it would be funny just to dog on the dead girl on TV. Um, let's see. Okay. Alright, I got one more. It's not a lot. I, um, I'll say my probably most toxic trait. Um, I get really mad when people don't know basic things. You know, like, things that, like, you should know, especially, like, history facts. Like, if someone doesn't know a basic history fact, I'm like, this fucking guy. It's just like, how did you go your whole life without knowing that? Like, I was talking with somebody, and I was talking about how my grandfather fought under Mussolini. She was like, oh, like, what's Mussolini? And I was like, <sighs> It was like he was just like the leader of Italy during World War II. Uh, 
Um, and it makes me so mad. And that girl was my best friend. I love her anyways, but she's so dumb. <laughs> and that's all I have. Keep it going for Mallory Brown, everybody. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Your next comic. This man's been ripping and running. He started like three weeks ago. I love his smile, man. He just got a natural smile. Come on up here, man. This is my nephew, your nephew, everybody's nephew. It's Chuck nephew, everybody! I appreciate it, Pat. I appreciate it. Hey, white people. Hello. <laughs> I'm only here because I'm looking for a night job. Yeah, I need my wife to think I'm being very productive. <laughs> because I got bills to pay. My life bill has hell. Five hundred dollars. I looked at the statement today, and it said, "Blame your wife, nigga." Four ninety nine. I said, God damn. My wife got to cut on every light in the house, every two steps. I be like, come on, boy, I'm trying to sleep like. I be damned if I cut on any light switch. I walk through the house in the dark like. I hit my toe and everything like, I don't give a fuck like. I would not cut on that light, true. But now, I like to say white people, Stop treating your pets better than your kids. Stop it. I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of saying little Ryan on the leash and the dog in the stroller. Man. It's crazy out here. Y'all different. Y'all different. Serious question though, white people. Oh, why the hell y'all walk so fast? That's not even a joke, you know. I just be so concerned when I see a white man walking so fast. I think he going to the hospital for an emergency or something like that. So I be like, all right, let me go. Then he'll push me out the way, then I see him going to Starbucks. I be like, God damn, that parking latte must be something serious. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of fellas here. A lot of fellas. Fellas, I just want to put y'all on game. We need to start catching on to the signs. We need to catch the signs that these females are laying out for us. Um, if their Instagram page is private, that lets you know she's trying to have something. Taylor Swift page ain't private. You, you more important than Taylor tell Swift? Come on now, like hell no. Nah. And if she watch a lot of First 48 fellas, it's time for you to break up with her. It's time to go. Cause you plotting on killing your ass. Niggas be so stupid though, we be like, right beside her, eating the popcorn like. Oh, this is, he ready to snitch already, I had a boo. She look at you like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Catch on to the signs, folks. I don't trust no female that don't have a purse or a wallet. Because she ain't gonna attempt to pay for shit. <laughs> That's true, that's true. <laughs> Man, uh, do y'all still talk on the phone? Do anybody still talk on the phone? Still talk on the phone? Yeah. I don't talk on the phone no more because I realize the power of texting. You can tell a female anything as long as you send an LOL behind it. True, it's true, fellas, it's true. One, one, one woman told me I had a small dick, so I text her, bitch, you pussy garbage anyway. LOL. You know what she sent back? Oh, you stupid. LOL. Crying emoji face. Yeah, true story. <laughs> but no, man, oh. Gotcha. Ah, oh, damn. I forgot my joke. Patrick and the flash the light in my face. I forgot everything now. 
But no, I feel like, I feel like I'm getting old now. I just found the great pubic hair. Yeah, either I'm getting wise or my dick will need a cane after this show. <laughs> I'll check that for you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Keep it going with Chuck Nephew, everybody. He, I shined the light on him and he forgot everything. Dude, it's a white light. It's not blue and red lights. Hey, Chuck, for real, if, you're, if your power bill is high, dude, I'm going to give you a tip, dude. Your power bill is high, for real? Look, all you got to do is stop leaving the oven open to heat the house, dude. That's all you got to do. He's laughing, guys. You can laugh. You guys still having fun, everybody? Hell yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we got another comic coming up. There we go. Remember this time. All right. Your next comic. Big Daddy. Big Red Daddy. He's ready. He's pacing. He's wet. Jet. Got it moving like a turbo jet. All right. I forgot the words. I don't know any songs. Guys, give it up for Cam Moore, everybody. Hey. With a little rub and some tenderness, walk upon the water. I love Darius Rucker because he had foresight. He did, he got into a music industry that was full of racists, and he was like, "I'm just gonna give myself a slur before they get to it." Hootie, come on. <laughs> Maybe that's inspired by a true story. Maybe somebody called him that at a gas station or something before he got into music. I don't know. I'm a little disappointed that we have a PA system that doesn't let me do the, the ghost voice anymore. Because how am I supposed to fuck with people downstairs? How am I supposed to pretend that I'm their dead grandfather chastising them for drinking on a Tuesday? While he was fighting in World War II. Uh... I'm just winging this one. Uh, my man's got two layers of sports jerseys on. That's another, you got an old Miss shirt on. Speaking of racism, could you name a college anything more racist than Ole Miss? <laughs> it's like you show up on campus for your first day of class and they're like, I'm your professor. Go on back where you came from. Everyone's geisha laughing right now. It's not going to pick up on the camera. I need to look good for you two. Uh, I, uh, it's getting to be October, you know, which is my favorite season. I love Halloween. Big spooky guy. Uh, I, uh, I love Scooby-Doo. Any Scooby-Doo fans in the house? Yeah, the only problem is, you know, I'm a 30-year-old man, and I think it's time to just admit it. You know, Scooby-Doo is a fantasy. All right, Scooby-Doo is not real. We just have to accept that. There's no such thing as talking animals. You could never fit a sandwich that big in your mouth. And the cops would have shot that dog on sight. It's true. Uh, I, uh, my friend told me recently he thinks he's addicted to gambling. And when he said, I, I was like, what type of gambling? He said, I'm addicted to slots. And I was like, <laughs> so if you're going to be addicted to something, can you at least be good at it? Get addicted to poker, baccarat, something you know, something that takes skill. Being addicted to slots is like saying, I'm an alcoholic. It takes me like three or four Mike's Hard Lemonades just to get through the day. I also don't think it's a real addiction unless you're willing to suck dick for it. Can we have that conversation? I've never seen anybody blow at somebody for a three-way parlay on a Jets game. Uh, what am I going to Yeah, Halloween. I'm a big Halloween guy. Uh, I started hitting the gym recently. 
And it's not because I want to, you know, get healthy and avoid a risk of, you know, dying of diabetes or anything like that. It's just because I want to stop putting fat in front of all of my Halloween costumes. I was out on the, time, the town last year, and every dude was walking by like, Babe, look, it's Fat Doug Dimidum. Last year I went as Fat Austin Powers. The year before that I was regular Newman from Seinfeld. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Baseball. Another another part of the season that I love is that baseball's final end ending because fuck baseball. I don't think it's a real sport. Uh, not even baseball players take baseball seriously. They're in the middle of the game. They're playing pranks on each other in the dugout. They don't do that shit in hockey. <laughs> I find it really hard to take baseball seriously when the best baseball player of all time, Babe Ruth. Looked like he was always about to explode. He looked like that guy from the Monty Python skit. Well, I uh, I can't come up. I came up here without a set list, and uh, I'm leaving the same way. I've been Kale Moore. That's my time. Thank you. Give it up for Babe Ruth, everybody. I need everybody, welcome, welcome everybody. This is a stand-up comedy. Um, everybody who ever talks to Jason, uh, damn, fuck. Jacob, after this, tell him it's going well. Um, I'm doing perfect. Uh, Silver, we'll, we'll, if, all right, so this is Silver, everybody. If you want your video after this, you can pay him $10 and he'll get it to you. I'm gonna pay him $100 to delete all of mine. Heck yeah, we're gonna keep it uh, rolling. We got my man, came in all the way from Petersburg. You know him, you love him. Make some noise for Moo Kuzo, everybody! Uh, keep it going for John Rodemacher, y'all. John came up here and represented for black people. Now I'm gonna represent for niggas. Cause you need more than one image of black man in your life, goddammit. it. You know what I mean? Like it's still a difference. You know what I mean? Like black men. Like if you, if, if your partner tell tell a black man that they're bi, a black man would take you to a pride event. But if you tell a nigga you bi, he take you to the club. <laughs> Pick one, bitch. <laughs> Shit. That's what it do. I've been married for like two years, and my wife finally came out. She told me she's talking to enough to tell me she would have a threesome, and I was like, okay. She said with somebody she's attracted to, and I found out that she's only attracted to studs. So if we have a threesome, it's gonna be with a chick that look like me. Like, how that's gonna work? Her, me with a beard, me without a beard. I, that's kind of weird. And then what if she an aggressive type? You know what I mean? I'm a southern gentleman. I'm like, y'all been over. She's like, nah, nigga, y'all been over. I'm like, shit, I'm sorry. Like, that's crazy. This is a threesome or a train, goddammit. Um, Rodemacher. John Rodemacher. Represented for the black people. See, if you tell a, if a black person tell another black person my last name, Rodemacher, they're like, you was adopted? <laughs> like, it's all good. Um, what did I really kind of talk about? Oh, also, shout out to your host, Patrick. Uh, uh, Logan doing a good job. His homophobic ass. He was like, why people keep calling me gay? Why people, I said, I know how I knew you was gay. He said, how? I said, because you always got a pinky in the air every time you suck on my dick. Like, that's gay as hell, pinky in the air, ain't it? Doesn't that shit look gay? Somebody sucking a dick with their pinky all in the air and shit? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, my job uh, last June team, they had a little luncheon party, they had pizza and shit. I was, I was like, they tried. But the pizza was from Papa John's, so it was still a fail. Uh, and I was like, it was cool, but the thing that made me mad, like it was, I thought it was gonna be like all the black people was gonna come through, like yeah, we we work hard for this pizza. But then uh, it was more people coming. It was like for black and people of color. And I'm like, the fuck is this of color shit? Like, and can't you just call yourself black too? They're like, nah, we of color. So how did when did this shit start? Cause black people, we went through 400 years of slavery. We deserve this pizza, right? And so they're like, nah, of color. Like, what was y'all back in the day when the goddamn police was setting hoses and goddamn dogs on niggas and goddamn the Klan was coming? Like, get all the black people, y'all want like and of color and the brown people too? Hell no, nah. fuck y'all that then. I was mad as shit, but I shared the pizza. All right, so uh, 
Damn, that's really all I wrote down the whole time and shit? I had shit. Alright, let me see. I'm gonna do it like this. This is gonna be a sweat list. What y'all do for a living? Mental health, you do mental health for a living. How does that work? <laughs> you work at a facility or you do private practice? It's a nonprofit that does mental health workshops. Awesome, awesome. I just did a, 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 a whole goddamn comedy festival. I think mental health is important because I come from a place where we didn't really believe in mental health. We just gotta pretend like you're cool with shit and keep it going, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I, I, but therapy is good, especially once I got married because we go answer questions that you don't really want to answer in public or at home because you don't want to feel vulnerable, right? So it's good to have a mediator. You know what I mean? Like this morning we went, my wife, and the mediator was like, how do you know I was the one when you met me? You know, and the therapist was like, yeah, how do you know she was the one when you met her? And I kept it real because when you meet the one, anybody married know when you meet the one, certain things just line up and make sense, you know? Like when I met her, she lived in Central Virginia and I, Needed somewhere to live. So it's like, look how God works, you know what I mean? So it's cool, therapy is important, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, let's see. What, what's, what's some shit I, I was going to talk about my job. I, I do retention for a living. That's what I really do. I work on the phones. I don't know if y'all know what it's like to have to call customer service. Like, you ever be walking, minding your business, and uh, and then your phone go off, and it say something like, um, thank you for your subscription. And you like, fuck, I forgot to cancel that shit. And you got to call. You got to talk to me. <laughs> That's what I do for a living, you know what I mean? And it's funny, uh, because white men over 30 do not know how to fuck the head of customer service. Like, I don't know, how any white men over 30 in here makes noise. Yeah. I'm gonna start, you ever had, you ever got found yourself cussing at customer service? No, you were, you one of the good ones. I wish you more people were like you. Or you probably just remember to cancel your fucking subscription and shit. But it should be crazy. I just wanted to give a couple rules, like, to, to people that, and it ain't just white men, anybody, when you call the customer service, first of all, when you find yourself yelling the same thing over and over again, you already fucked up. Back up. Like, we in there like, what did I ask you to do? What did I ask you to do? Rule number two, I don't have to cancel your account. I would rather get roped the fuck up and sent home to cancel your shit right now, goddammit. Uh, that's how that works. And then I'll be working retention on a Sunday, which is weird. You ever get cussed out with Jesus music playing in the background? It's very disheartening, you know what I mean? Like, they come in hot too. You supposed to cancel my goddamn description? You go ahead and cancel that shit. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You're like, all right, uh, yeah, I see you. You forgot to cancel. I ain't forget shit. You gonna cancel? You gonna refund my money with your fat ass? Like, how the fuck did you know? <laughs> She's like, because I can hear your fat ass breathing. Like, goddamn. She's like, now go to the gym and lose some weight. You might get a real job, motherfucker. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I said, you know what? Switch me to Mondays. Um, that's much better. I don't know. Uh, I got a. Uh, oh, damn. Is that the light? All right. I'm gonna get up out of here on this. I'm Luke Cuzzo. You can follow me Facebook, Instagram, Pornhub, Christian Nigga. Um, that's crazy. Why am I on Christian Nigga? That's stupid. I am on Pornhub. I got my own move. Don't try it unless your nigga's strong. It's called the Upside Down Spider Monkey, but I do it in reverse. Now, with Pornhub, you gotta put in your information to get on there, so it ain't on X2 yet. But uh, check me out. It's MU804. Follow me. I'm out. <laughs>
Can't wait. <laughs> My name's Chris Lippa. Don't feel bad if you forget it. it. Makes me feel better about forgetting people's names. Anybody else have that? Gives me anxiety. That's up people's names all the time. My friend David, I had a bad one the other day. My friend David walks in with his wife, Kristen. I go, what's up, David? What's up, Kristen? Kristen goes, I go, oof. I knew deep down it wasn't it. I had to eat it. There was nobody behind her. I couldn't play it off, so I had to eat it. I go, isn't that Kristen? She goes, no, it's Eric. I'm like an idiot. You ever just respond without thinking? Like an idiot? I go, are you sure? <laughs> Bad with names. Better with faces. Perfect with titties. Perfect with titties. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Remembering those. I never forget a pair. Thank you, person downstairs. I'll take that. Whether it's for me or not, I'll take it. <laughs> Olympics are over. The Olympics are over. America took 40 gold Olympics home, 40 first place medals. That's right. Yes, America. 18 of those were in track and field. Eight of those were in swimming events. And the rest of those were in being transphobic. So, congratulations, America. You did it. USA. Too much, too much Facebook. Too much Facebook. Facebook's a weird place, isn't it? Saw a, saw a person on Facebook Marketplace trying to sell underwear like new. How's that work? I mean, like new underwear. There's no such thing. Underwear either new or used, new or pre-owned. Don't try to do that GameStop thing. Let me just open it. No. There's a mark on it. I don't trust it. It's been a good time for good time for movies. Big movie fan. Anybody else? Big movie people. That's right. Scary movie seasons coming upon us. A lot of good scary movies right now. You have uh, that new Exorcist movie that's coming out. And in my opinion, the scariest movie recently was Abigail. Abigail kind of scared the shit out of me, kind of a pussy. According to most of my conservative friends, the scariest movie recently was Barbie. That's between that or anything Disney's putting out. <laughs> and those live action Disney remake. Thank you. I guess. So on. Um, so on the news, the mayor, a mayor of a small town in Georgia got arrested for leaving a bottle of gin in a ditch where the state working prisoners were at. He premeditated, put it there, and left a bottle of gin there, got arrested. According to officials, the, uh, the inmates were the ones that actually reported him after they discovered the bottle of gin and realized that it wasn't Hennessy. <laughs> where they're getting out of control. All these, um, you know what's getting out of control is, is tip culture. Tip culture is getting ridiculous, isn't it? Everywhere you go, they ask me to tip. Round up your change. Taco Bell, really Taco Bell, you want me to round up my spare change? The only reason I'm here is because of my spare change. Why is he eating real food somewhere, right? You feel me? Don't hide the laugh. Don't hide the laugh. Seriously, though, uh, go to Subway, they want me to tip 20% when 80% of my sub is just bread. Where's the meat? Nobody else, no, nobody frequents Subway anymore, I don't blame you. You know the worst thing about Subway? Is when you're only in there for two minutes, and then you smell like them for the rest of the day. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's in your hair, it's in the jacket, all that. Speaking of hair, I need a haircut. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. No, mainly, mainly because I need people to stop mistaking me for being Jewish. <laughs> My friend said it's, it's getting a little dangerous out here for <laughs> Things by the day. Nobody, nobody for us out here. But I'm not Jewish. Even though people always, I work retail. People always, you know, you know, say something like blah blah blah. Oh, I don't mean to Jew you down. You know, it's times have changed though. Back in the day, you used to say, I don't mean to Jew you down. Oh wait, oh I'm sorry. Are you Jewish? Are you Jewish? I hope you're Jewish. Nowadays they go, no, I don't. Some some I don't want to Jew you down. Wait a second. Are you Jewish? It's a whole different tone, right? It's just an aggressive tone. I don't know. I gotta work on that. <laughs> gotta work on that. What else in the news? I saw O.J. Simpson died. O.J. Simpson died, or as I've been saying, the juice has expired. <laughs> That's right. The juice finally expired, despite going bad in the '90s. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I also saw in the news a lady that was 104 years old went skydiving. The word was. No. No. 104 years old skydiving. That is impressive. Even more impressive, she didn't even need a parachute. She just used her skin. That's it, just her skin. Just floated down like an old bat. Um, that's my time. Uh, my name's Chris Sipple. <laughs> Keep it going for Chris Sipple, everybody. What a mic, what a mic. Uh, 
So think about this, Mike. Usually when I come here, I always bomb. I always bomb when I come here, and I was so excited when Jacob was like, hey, do you want to come here and bomb for two hours? I was like, hell yeah, dude. I'm doing great. All right, uh, your next comic. Really good, where is he at? Where, oh, there, nope. There he is, Caleb Gibney. Come on up here. Oh my god, we're all tired, it's the day after Labor Day. We all do shit, like Nurse Hangover, we do shit because we're tired. It always blew my mind that we drain uh, meat and vegetable juice in the sink, but uh, peeing in the sink is unsanitary. So, uh... Alright, here's a joke. Um, what did Freddie Mercury say? after driving his pay-to-win freemium car. I want to break free! <laughs> Freud, uh, Sigmund Freud, you don't know who Sigmund Freud is, fucking weird Austrian old dude who has a weird bit. He theorized that homosexuality was just, and I quote, unproductive aggression. <laughs> Freud was definitely in the closet. There is nothing unproductive about butt sex. <laughs> they are struggling to work out their differences. No, Freud, they coordinate their elimination schedules. Uh, anyway, uh, chicken wings. I like to eat chicken wings. They're my favorite food because I like eating to have an element of skill. You know. Oh. Body acceptance, folks, is really important. I, as a tall guy with a Chad jawline, even I have legitimate dysphoria. And recently I was at a loss how even after receiving a compliment on my da da da, whatever, I took an air bath, the kind promoted by Benjamin Franklin, you know? Uh, and and uh, I was trying to, you know, develop my own body positivity. I was naked in my apartment and I was sitting on my chair with my yoga mat so my butt sweat doesn't get on the yoga chair, uh, and uh, I, my ball set was just resting there, and I thought, this is beautiful. It's beautiful. <sighs> Shit. Oh, uh, I was dating two girls at the same time, and uh, I didn't know how to break up with one of them. But something happened. The second girl sent me a breakup message, and I forwarded that message to the first girl. <laughs> and we're still friends. Like, it, it worked really well. It, it, it takes a woman to break up with a woman, I think. So. Kissing, <laughs> kissing people is fun. I just remembered, uh, I remember one time I was, uh, kissing a girl and I started giggling and she was like, why are you giggling? I, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm a white guy in therapy. I don't really have anything to feel bad about. So sometimes I'll just stop taking drugs. That's it. Uh, one time I double team cyber someone with my, uh, on Skype. And my best friend. That was kind of wild. It all started, we were just like sitting there and the girls just started moaning and then uh, he hands me a roll of toilet paper and I'm like, what's this for? And he's like, so you don't make a mess, dude. And he runs out of the room. And I actually just started jerking off. I was like, well, I mean, I might as well. We're all here. And uh, I couldn't finish. This was just like my first, like, whoa, this is, I didn't imagine college would be this spicy. And, uh, so I, I just like tap out, go to the next room, and he's like, and like, did you did you finish? And I'm like, no, dude, I couldn't finish. He's like, and then he said, I'll show you how a man does it. And he goes in there, and I, I think you finished. So we, uh, yeah, we, got, we double team, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll leave it with this. Uh, partying is fun. Uh, I remember. Uh, it started out young. My oldest brother was the one who would always bring drugs home. And 
uh, he was kind of a researcher about it. So he'd, he'd hand me a cigarette, I'd smoke it, and he'd be like, now how, does, how do you feel? And uh, I can tell you, after 10 years of partying, I, I know how everything feels. Anyway, thank you so much. I'm Caleb. Caleb Gibney, everybody. All right, thank you guys so much. You have made it into the second half of the show. The rest of the show is just all killers, just like the first half of the show, but this is the announcement part. Uh, the, the rest of the show is amazing. We're all here for it. Let's do it. Your next comic. One half of Basic City Comedy. One of the funniest guys that we know. Let's give it up for him, Tyler Bauer, everybody! Yeah, what's up, home sweet home? We're here, we're loud! I still see your shadows in my room. Can't take back the love that I gave you. Home sweet home, people always talk about banning guns. I think we should ban people that don't use a turn signal. It's not an option, people. Breaking news, the Hawk Tua girl has been kidnapped by Hamas. They're harvesting her spit to throw over the Israel border wall since it's not kosher. People always talk about banning abortion. I think we should ban people that don't immediately drive when the light turns green. It's not getting any greener, people. Breaking news, the Costco guys, a.k.a. AJ and Big Justice, along with the Rizzler, have been implicated on sex trafficking charges. <laughs> when reached out for comic, uh, comment, Costco said, we don't even know what a Rizzler is. <laughs> if you're familiar with the Costco guys, did you know the Rizzler's not even their kid? That's weird. <laughs> People always talk about small dick problems. I got small dick acceptance. Where are my growers at home, sweet home? We shine when the time comes. Breaking news, Joe Biden saw his shadow after waking up a after a nap, which means six more weeks of Kamala Harris quote-unquote backing that thing up. Home sweet home, the most athletic thing I do is wear a mouth guard when I sleep. I never learned how to grind a rail, but I grind my teeth pretty good. Home sweet home, why is it every time me and my boys jerk each other off at the Planet Fitness, it sets off the lunk alarm? What the hell is that about, Planet Fitness? Why, are, why is Planet Fitness homophobic? Home sweet home, I'm a big history buff. I like history a lot. I like to imagine different scenarios in history. I like the presidents a lot. I like to imagine how all the different presidents would give head. Like, for example, how would George Washington give head? You know, he's just throwing it back, really giving you the neck, the brain, everything. And then one of those wooden teeth just scrapes the base of your cock. Imagine Abraham Lincoln. He's giving you head. He's throwing it back. His mascara is running. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Now he's going to free cum from your balls. <laughs> he's giving you the clock lock, as the kids say. And then that top hat just keeps hitting you in the chest like... Imagine this, home sweet home. Think about this. Imagine Ben Franklin, famous president Ben Franklin. He's giving you head. He's giving you head so hard the, the one little bit of hair he had left is falling out. And then he ties a little string with the key attached to it that's a kite, and then he uses it to discover electricity. He ties that to the base of your dick, and it activates the world's first lunk alarm. This set sponsored by Gold's Gym because they're not homophobic and I can jerk my boys off there anytime I want. <laughs> Home 
sweet home. Who remembers Hogan's Heroes? Who remembers the 1960s show Hogan's Heroes? It was a 1960s show about a bunch of American soldiers in World War II stuck in a Nazi POW camp. But it was played for laughs. It's a whimsical sitcom. They get into all kinds of antics. Nothing says lighthearted and fun like a Nazi POW camp. There's a fat Nazi that runs the POW camp. He has silly little catchphrases. He always says, I hear nothing, I see nothing. The good Nazis needed more catchphrases. Uh, it's wild though, because again, this was like 20 years after World War II. That would be like having a lighthearted sitcom about 9-11 now. In the show, they discover uh, explosive charges in the basement of the World Trade Center. And they're like, I hear nothing, I see nothing. All right. I've been Tyler Barry Elvin Lowey. Thank you so much for your hand back to Patrick Hogan, your host. Goodbye. Hell yeah, keep it going for Tyler Bauer. Keep it going for growers. Hell yeah. Your, your next comic is a shower. Don't look. Hey guys, uh, comedians, if you see somebody that's not a comedian, please give them a seat. Let's make this a party, baby. Let's go. We got a good rest of the show coming. Hell yeah. Your next comic. Let's give it to him, Danny McCabe. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. Gotta love it. Love you. Love you all. Love you all. Whoever said love you, I love you more. Oh man. You know, it's crazy, uh, Tyler talking about 9-11, uh, because I had something I wanted to say about that. You know, we're coming up on it, so we're all thinking about it. You know, we're thinking about it. Basically, what I thought was, what if there's a parallel universe out there where 9-11 in school shootings switch times of how often they occur? So we had one school shooting. One school shooting that was like, we remembered like 9-11, but 9-11s happen every single day. That would be awful. Do you think we could still say, how could we let this happen? Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, uh, so my name's Danny McCabe. I am um, a quarter Lebanese. A lot of people think that's pretty cool, but at the end of the day, it's just white. Um, so if you're looking for a name to call me, don't call me a cracker, call me a pita chip. You know, I'm crispy, I'm dry, often associated with hummus. Is that drum roll? Uh, any guys out there in relationships? Relationships, guys? Woo, we got one out there. Any y'all been in those, uh, what is it, that uh, black cat girlfriend and golden retriever boyfriend? You guys familiar with that? Yeah. No, the, the, so if you don't know what that is, basically it's like, okay, so the femme or the, you know, the uh, girlfriend or the partner is like a black cat, and then you have the other partner that is a lot like a golden retriever. But I don't think that that narrows it down enough. I think that there are so many different breeds of dog that it has to, like, it has to transfer. And like all things, it has to be on a spectrum, right? So you have your Great Dane boyfriends, which you know, like kind of big and dumb, drooling a lot. You have your, uh, whatchamacallit, you have uh, those Jack Russells, which are your short kings out there, you know? They're, uh, they're little, they scuttle around kind of like that, but uh, you know, you bump into them in the wrong way, they're gonna fucking bark at you. Yeah. And then you have all of y'all out there who are making excuses for yourselves, getting those rescues, say, He's not housebroken yet. And then on top of that, you know, oh, well, he's not good with other dogs. That's y'all's business, not mine. Speaking of stuff out there that people know of, you guys been watching that show, The Bear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love The Bear. It's a great show. It's about chefs, if you haven't seen it. I think that the best conclusion for that show would be to find out at the end that they're all being ratatouille. Could you imagine that? An elaborate amount of rats 
having this entire conversation through people that is so elaborate and intense and it turns out it's just therapy puppets for the rats. <laughs> Crazy stuff out there. Speaking of Pixar movies, have any of you all been hearing the rumors about me? Because I kind of want to put them to rest. Alright? I was not the guy who stole Woody in Toy Story 2. That was somebody else. It was not me. Oh, man. Yeah, they were not ready for that one. All right. So yeah, um, you guys ever been in those situationships? I know we talked about relationships. You've seen those situationships out there? You know, it's got all the bad parts of a relationship, and it's got all the good parts of just being platonic. I was in one once, and she did not fucking like me one bit, you know? It was all a physical sort of thing. And uh, one night, she wants me to help her finish. I know what you're thinking by looking at a guy like me. All right, here we go. We got two hours and 30 minutes. We didn't watch a lot of the same movies either. So I decided, she's like, I want you to tell me a story. So I'm like, all right, you asked. And I shit you not, I just got halfway through The Phantom Menace before she asked, is this a movie? And I was like, yeah, let me finish, because there's about five more after that. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much at Home Sweet Home. I love you all. Yeah. Keep it going for Danny McCabe, everybody! Alright, we're getting to the meat and potatoes of this thing. Your next comic is the other half of Basic City Comedy. Every Wednesday at Basic City at 8 o'clock p.m. You're going to love them. You're going to have fun with them. Let's give it up for Monty Giles, everybody! Woo! What's up, everybody? Hell yeah. Uh, I was a teacher for a year last year, uh, so I know school's coming back. Uh, any teachers in here? No? Hell yeah. Smart choice. Kids suck absolute shit. They're the worst versions of ever. Be like, it's like hanging out with someone you can always like kill, but like they're so fucking annoying. You know? At any point, you can take a kid and just... At any point. But you can't, because like, they have to learn or some shit. I don't know. But I, I, I miss my kids because they are funny, you know what I'm saying? So I started, I got a job where I could keep like interacting with them. So I started selling weed to them after class. Yeah, I made more money than I did teaching, honestly. It's weird. But like, I found out they're a lot smarter than, than they let on. Because I tried to short them. I tried really hard to short them. Like, they'll ask for an eighth. I'll give them like 2.7. And they're like, mm, Mr. Giles, this seems a little bit off. I'm like, where the fuck did you learn fractions from? But I had this one student I used to sell weed to her. She was this little black lesbian, and that's not her name. That was her nickname. I would, I would see her, I'd be like, what up, LBS? She'd be like, what up? And she was funny, because like, being a 14-year-old like dyke is funny. Like, it, like you, you know a lot about yourself very early, and you kind of only go up from there, you know what I'm saying? So like, she was funny as shit, because like, boys would try to fuck with her. they try to fuck with her. I remember it was like, I was doing hall hallway duty a week before the school year ended, right? And I was in the hallway, and she was walking down the hallway with this boy, and the boy was talking shit to her. And she was like, the boy, boy was like, fuck you, you little ass, Missy Elliott ass bitch, blah, blah, blah. And she was just like calm, she was calm. And she turned around, she looked at him, and she was like, keep talking shit. I swear to God, I'll scissor your bitch. What? <laughs> And as the teacher, as the authority in this position, I was like, yo, I was like, should I do something? It was too late, because my mouth was already like, oh! I dapped her up again, I dapped her up on camera. I dapped her up on camera. And the little boy was like, oh, Mr. Jones, you're gonna let her talk like that? I was like, hey, bro, if you bitch choose, you bitch choose. He owed me $20 on an eighth anyways, fuck him. Uh, where's my men at? Can I talk to my men real quick? Can I talk to my fellas? Yeah. Brothers, isn't it? <laughs> my, my brothers. <laughs> Homies, isn't it? Isn't it? It sucks as men because as men, head can fix anything. It can fix absolutely. And that sucks. Yeah. No, shut up. It sucks. Yeah. It su See, look, you're, uh, you're just sad. Get on, I don't know. I'll give you some Molly after the show. All right. But like, head can fix everything. 
you know? And it sucks because like, we're complex people too. And we have complex issues. You know what I'm saying? My mom has breast cancer. She's gonna have breast cancer the rest of her fucking life. So I always have this fucking like conundrum in my head of like, my mom's always gonna die, but she's alive right now. How do I deal with that? And if someone started sucking my dick, I'd be like, hey, everyone has to go at a certain point. That's not good. That's not good for the psyche. Uh, anyone here get, want to get plastic surgery? Anyone here into plastic surgery? Oh, hell yeah. Dick extensions. Well, I'm sorry? Dick extensions. Dick extensions. Well, are you okay? Did, did someone break your no, heart? No, I'm not. I'm in home sweet home. What the fuck do you expect? I feel like your sleeves, I feel like his sleeves broke up with him. You're at, so we so you should be we should share this connection. You should we be. We really should. Come on, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I don't want to kiss him. He looks straight. He looks like Chris Hansen's gonna come in at any point. You know what I'm saying? You look like you you look like a sick man with some sick thoughts. I think N words like you should die. There we go. Come on, man. But no, I want to get I want to get uh, plastic surgery. I want to get, like, you know how like, dudes are like, oh, I want a huge, he said, like, dick extensions. I want a huge dick hole. I want my dick hole to be, like, geyser-like. Geyser. You know what I'm saying? I want my dick hole so big, if you gave me head, it looked like you were whispering into a wishing well. That would be so cool. I know, I know. I want a dick hole so big, if you put a quarter in it, I would fart and give you a soda can. I want to get, like, robotic with it. I want my foreskin back. I'm gonna get like a metal insert, so like on warm days I can take the top off. Uh, I know I'm up here, I'm being a little silly Billy, uh, but I wanna, ladies, I'll, I'll talk to y'all. This pippin's cold, okay? I don't fuck around. I talk to my bitches like this, I say, bitch, please. Cause most dudes are trying to murder the pussy, I'm trying to kill it with kindness. Okay, my name is Monty Jowls. We all have a lovely audience. Please give it up for Patrick Logan, everyone. Give it up for Mr. Giles. Hell yeah. He's got a small dick hole, but a huge dick. All right, let's keep it going. Uh, your next comic has a huge fucking dick hole, guys. Give it up for Zach Carpenter. I don't give a fuck about shit. I don't give a fuck about shit. Uh, sorry, that's just a new character I'm trying out called the guy who doesn't give a fuck about shit. Um, he's actually pretty chill if you want to get to know him. Smoke cigarettes. Uh, got some interesting political views as well. Um, I... Um, I, uh, a little bit about me, I, uh, I grew up, I played a lot of basketball growing up, but my dad was a real hard ass about my basketball playing, you know, he was like, this is what you're going to do, you're going to be a basketball player, and I was like, alright, I'm down with that, and then I just decided I didn't really want to do that as much anymore, I kind of just wanted to dance and sing, and, and I wanted to sing and dance, and I wanted to star in the, in the musical for our school, and, um, and uh, I, I fell in love with this girl who also wanted to sing and dance and be in the musical and my best friend was Corbin Blue. Uh, that's what I've been doing recently. When people ask me about myself, I just tell them the plots of movies. They'll be like, oh, tell me about yourself, Zach. And I'll be like, well, I was an orphan. Uh, I lived with my aunt and uncle. I grew up underneath their staircase. Uh, and then one day I uh, one day I went to uh, the zoo and a snake started talking to me and I understood what it was saying. And um, so that's yeah that's about that. I like to uh, a little bit about me. I like to uh, sleep with the TV on. I like to sleep with the TV on. I like to cozy up into my bed. I like to uh, I like to sleep with the TV on. I like to cozy up into my bed. I like to. Get all relaxed, I like to uh, turn on the TV, no input or nothing, just... It's very relaxing for me. I didn't want, I didn't have a punchline, but I just wanted to see if everyone was awake. Um, I, um, I, uh, the other day, this guy asked me if I had a dollar, and I was like, I don't have a dollar, man. He was like, come on, you got a dollar. I was like, I don't have a dollar. He was like, give me a fucking dollar. I was like, I don't have a dollar, man. He was like, 
well, do you want a haircut? I was like, I, I guess I could use a haircut. I mean, I need a haircut. He was like, all right, I'll give you a haircut. I was like, all right, give me a haircut. He was like, you got clippers? I was like, what the fuck? You don't got anything, do you? He just, he just didn't have anything, I guess. Um, I was whistling, walking down the street the other day. I was whistling and walking down the street, and this lady, she was like, oh, my God, are you catcalling me? I was like, yes. Did you not notice the Meow Mix theme song I was doing? Now take this can of tuna and help me find my cat. We still haven't found it yet. Uh, if you see it, it's a tabby with a missing eye. His name is Lucky. Um, there's this thing called uh, pre-nut delusion and post-nut clarity. Um, there's this thing called pre-nut delusion and post-nut clarity. Everybody suffers from it. I've been suffering from it in every decision I make, so I've just been jerking off before every decision I have to make. Even in the drive through I'm jerking off. Um, they're like, uh, they're like, do you want the spicy or the regular chicken sandwich? I'm like, I don't know. And so I'm like, just give me one second. I'm gonna circle back around and get back to you. And so I'm just jerking off and coming back to them, and they're like, have you made your decision? I'm like, no. And so I'm just like, just it just becomes this vicious circle of me jerking off and just not making it. It's, it's a circle jerk, if you will, I guess, in the drive through That joke is only okay because I wrote it while I was jerking off in the drive through um, I, uh, I like to watch movies and I, and I like to compare people's faces to movie stars. And sometimes that's kind of tough as a white dude. Uh, you kind of, it's kind of hard to do as a white dude. You'd be like, you go up to a black guy, you're like, you kind of look like uh, so-and-so from this movie. And they're like, oh, what, all black people look the same? And I'm like, no, dude, you specifically look like Questlove. Um, and there, sometimes it doesn't really work out. But I, uh, some people like say, sometimes they're like, oh, you know, I would, I would like to look like different people. People always say to me, oh, you look like the big Lebowski. I'm like, all right, well, what if I want to look like Viola Davis? Like, I want to be Michael Jordan's mom. I want to be in Fences. I want to know how to get away with murder. I'm just going through Viola Davis's IMDb now. Um, I'll leave you guys with this one. I, uh, does anyone know the show Ghost Adventures? I, um, I'm not a big fan of the show. They always look for some murderous rapist in some insane asylum or something. Why don't they take this thing down? I, they never look for a bro ghost. You're telling me no bro ghost slipped through the ethereal plane? Why don't they go down to like the Myrtle Beach boardwalk or something to look for a ghost? It's like they put the night vision goggles on and they're like, oh, did you feel that? It's like, yeah, somebody just tried to dap me up. They're like, oh, did you feel that? Yeah, I know. Somebody just nut tapped me and called me a pussy. All right, I've been Zach Carpenter. Thank you. Give me going for Viola Davis, everybody. Home sweet home where dreams come true. Your next comic. She runs an open mic every Tuesday at Kindred Spirits. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. She did it today. She's on the grind. She's here to make you laugh, guys. Give it up for Emily Urban. So, a group of beautiful Russian and Lithuanian and Estonian models have gathered together to do a photo shoot together. There's pretty ladies from that region of the world. Am I right, everybody? Am I right, everybody? They've rented a mansion in the desert to take their photos. They've rented a mansion in Death Valley, California. In fact, have you guys heard of Death Valley, California? It's hot out there. It's hot out there. As they're taking their photos together, the ladies, they notice that the uh, temperature inside the mansion is ticking up. 85, 90, 95 degrees inside. It's getting hot. Luckily for them, an air conditioning salesman is walking down the street, right? He knocks on their window. Ladies, would you like to buy an air conditioning unit? And the beautiful Russian model that opens the door, she says, no, thank you. We do only fans. 
Thank you. What are you guys talking about? What the fuck are you looking at me for? What are you looking you talking to me? If you guys fight right now, that would be better than stand-up comedy. If not, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Just the oopsie daisy. <laughs> um, I'm seeing this new guy. He's really a film buff. And the other day he was like, Emily, I really need you to see the thing. And I was like, bro, I saw the thing on our first date. I'm not a prude. <laughs> you don't remember what I did to it? He's like, no, Emily, I need you to see the thing. The special effects were amazing. I was like, bro, I remember the special fucking effects. Remember they got in my hair. He's like, critics rave about the thing. I'm like, I don't want to hear about your motherfucking exes. Sit down, shut the fuck up, let's watch a movie. Am I right? Am I right? Um, you guys, I work at a restaurant where I sell hamburgers and cheeseburgers. And I have beef with my customers. That's right, I have beef with my customers because they're little bitches about how they order their hamburgers and cheeseburgers, right? Like sometimes people are like, I'd like my cheeseburger to be like no other, make it one of a kind, make it rare. Or on the other hand, sometimes they're like, I want my burger to be an A plus student. I want my burger to be the best. My burger better get a gold star. My better burger better be well done, right? <laughs> and then some bitches, some bitches are like, I don't want my burger rare, I don't want my burger well done, I want it somewhere right in the middle, which makes it difficult because when I go back to the kitchen and I confront the cook and I retrieve the burgers to fetch them for my customers, the cook, he says to me, he says to me, he says to me, he says, that cheeseburger, it's like no other, it's rare. He says, that cheeseburger, it's well done. And that one, that one right there, that cheeseburger, it's the medium. And I swear to God, a cold chill blew into the room. And I felt a shiver down my spine. And I looked the cook in the eye and I said, be so fucking for real with me right now. Be so fucking for real with me right now. That burger communes with the dead. Are you telling me that that burger is a medium? Can that burger reach my grandfather? Is that what you're telling me? Um, raise your hand if you can read. <laughs> yeah, I see hands, I see hands, you guys. I make a little magazine for the comedy community. It looks like this. Uh, it's a piece of physical media. People are still making these. Volume 3 of Comedy Underground Magazine it includes contributions from people in this very room, people from beyond in the comedy community. I happen to think it's very funny. I have some copies if you'd like one, I guess. Uh, also in here, in the back of these, we got a sweet little calendar of open mics in Richmond. We run a lot of open mics in Richmond and some of us are pretty funny and they're usually free. If you guys like open mic comedy, you should come the fuck out. Give it up for me. and love Richmond, follow Comedy RVA. Follow Comedy Underground Magazine. If you don't, just know I'll fucking kill you. Emily Erplin almost broke my fucking hand shaking it. Alright, I'm not fucking with her no more. Um, Alright guys, we are down to the last three comedians of the night. And they're all and you are in for a treat for your next comic. She runs an open mic every Monday at Ipanema Cafe. We love her, you love her. Give it up for Flores Day, everybody! Hello! Give me a second, I gotta, I gotta make a phone call. Hold on. Hello? Yeah, 911? 
Yeah. There's there's a, about to be a killing. Yeah, there's it's mostly white people. Okay, bye. I, uh, I'm a trans lady. I've been thinking about getting uh, top surgery. I'm gonna get my asshole sewn shut. I, I have been thinking about getting a boob job. Um, they say you need boob experience to get a boob job. It's like, how do I get a boob job with no boob experience? What, in this boob economy? I went to boob school, got a master's in boobery. I got this weird thing for Asian women. It's a sombrero. I, uh, I got adopted by aliens the other week. Um, they didn't run any tests or anything, they just heard I had a really good pasta recipe. <laughs> Actually, now that, I, now that I think about it, they were speaking Italian. Uh, and now that I think about it, I, I was just in an Italian kitchen. I, um, they smell so bad. It's so foreign to me. It's just like, this has gotta be alien shit. To be clear, that's a joke about Italian-Americans, not Italians. Um, so it's okay. Uh, I think? Every shift's a graveyard shift when you work in a graveyard. I love when jokes get woos, and I... We agree with that! That is a correct statement! Joe Biden shouldn't be president. I get to tell this joke for six more months, I think. Joe Biden shouldn't be president! We all know this. He wasn't even born here. He was born in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always getting pegged as somebody who would enjoy anal. <laughs> My dog keeps trying to gaslight me. He keeps telling me I assassinated JFK. <laughs> it's like, dude, I was here all night. <laughs> Y'all ever be uh, pissing and shitting everywhere, and you're just like, God damn, there really should be a room for this. <laughs> do uh, do gay dogs go to heaven? <laughs> uh, this one just says, eggs, milk. Bread. Um, oh, this isn't. This isn't a joke. This is just my suicide note. I uh, I masturbate religiously. Um, I don't want to do it, but my parents make me. I want to open up a restaurant uh, that exclusively serves subs. Uh, and we tell them what to eat. Uh, I'll, I'll leave on this one. Uh, some people think I'm odd. Some people think I'm a little strange. I'm not strange. I'm just like everybody else in the world. I've got a glove box. And of course, in my glove box, there's a box. And of course, that box holds gloves. But where I differ from uh, everybody else in the audience is my glove box box gloves are uh, uh, boxing gloves. 
Yeah, um, that's a joke about autism. Everybody, uh, <laughs> bring your hooks back up here, Patrick Logan. All right, guys, your next comic. You ready? We got two more comics left. I'm so happy your next comic's here. She has been doing her thing uh, for a few, I don't know how long, but doing well, and I'm happy she's here. Give it up for Megan Richards. Yay! Yay, 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 thank you. I don't know, can y'all can hear me? Yeah. They want more. Okay, I'll give you more. You like that? You like that? Is that too loud? Is that too loud? No. No, not too loud. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, I, uh, I re-entered the dating pool recently. This whole fish wanted to feel the currents against her gills. And, um, I have gotten some feedback, though. Some of my loved ones have expressed concern about my type. Uh, my last boyfriend did call himself the Rat King. And the last time I saw the Rat King, he told me that he'd set up a tenement high-rise for spiders at the house. And he showed it to me. So that's just an apartment complex of spider webs stacked vertically in a corner. And the rents are outrageous. <laughs> it gives me pause, you guys. It does. It, it gives me pause. Um, yeah, so I have been asking around. I've been asking my friends what kind of stuff they're into. <laughs> One of my friends said she's attracted to her partner because he's stable and reliable. <laughs> I like it. My sister, though, she's into stuff like that. Um, emotional safety. <laughs> she goes crazy for it, like a pig to slop. Um, no, uh, if I'm attracted to a man, I'll show him to my sister, like, huh? Huh? And then she says, I feel fear. And then I'm like, that's not fear. You got a crush, baby girl. Buckle up. <laughs> About to get exciting. <laughs> Attraction, though, it is very mysterious, very mysterious. Uh, I am still paying the Rat King's trash bill. <laughs> He's a musician and I am a patron of the arts. <laughs> I do it for the community. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I'm also attracted to the Dark Lord Kylo Ren, <laughs> as we all are. Um, yes, that is, if you didn't know, that's the latest Star Wars Dark Lord, kind of like Darth Vader, but with an inferiority complex. I'm intrigued. Also, he kills his dad, so right off the bat, we're like, is that a red flag? <laughs> it, it, it does provoke self-reflection. Am I attracted to men who struggle with boundaries around patricide? Like, we all know we're against patricide. We're all like, no patricide. Opposed. <laughs> I'm just saying he's willful, okay? And so uh, I'm 
like, <laughs> you think you can just come over here and come to my house and parachute landing onto my asshole to protect yourself from infection? <laughs> he says, I have work tomorrow. I really can't risk it. <laughs> what am I, just an asshole with eyeballs to you? And the Pigeon King stops responding. See, the CDC says five to ten feet, says an asshole quarantine isn't a real thing. But the CD me says, and the CD me said, who's was gonna fuck my back and cut at the end? Did I miss? <laughs> I'm sorry I screamed. Um, oh, I got too close. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Vulnerable when I most need to be told how very soft my skin is. I can't even bribe a man to my home with my own asshole because of public health concerns. <laughs> to be clear, I didn't want to have anal sex. I was ill. I wanted a back rub and copies, that's compliments, but I had a sore throat and an asshole. I was looking for a barter, looking for a little bit of a trade, trying to connect with the community. Thank you. Here we go for Megan Richards, everybody. Hope this place gets real romantic if you do four minutes on anal and the lights go off. And, uh, <laughs> hey guys, we're down to your last comedian of the night. Are you ready for your last comedian of the night? What's up, everybody? What's up, my niggas? How we doing tonight? Yeah, y'all, y'all cool, y'all cool white people. I know it's good white people in here. I know it's good white people in here when I like walk in. Y'all don't know this, but we have this trick where we know we, the minorities have this trick where we, where we sniff, where we sniff the air. Black people sniff the air before you walk into whack establishments, so we know it's safe. I walked in here, I tasted and sniffed the air, and I was like, yeah, it smells like Cracker Barrel, I'm safe, it smells like Cracker I don't even know what Cracker Barrel smells like, like, I've never been there, that shit's like a myth to me, that shit's like Atlantis and student loan debt, like, that shit doesn't apply to me, like, it doesn't apply. But, no, like, well, I kind of, I kind of understand y'all now, I kind of understand y'all now, because, like, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, but, like, I'm a humble one, you know, like, Humble Dallas Cowboys fans have to say the same thing. Y'all have to say it like when you bring your black friend over, they're like, I'm sorry. We're not all like this. This doesn't represent our community as a whole. I'm sorry my grandfather called you the N-word at halftime. I'm sorry my black grandfather called you the hard R at halftime. I don't know why he did that. Nah, but sports fans are like, I don't know, sports fans are just ridiculous though, because like I realize like I couldn't switch teams, because I'm not that into the Dallas Cowboys, but like it's too late for me to switch teams. Like I tried to switch in college, but like I got like a letter saying like they have my family and friends hostage, and I was like, oh yeah, I did sign up for Scientology for some reason in Scientology. Anybody single or in a relationship here? <laughs> I, I'm single because, I don't know, I've given up on fucking dating, it's done. But like, out of boredom, I recently re-downloaded like Tinder and shit. And like, it's funny because like, I don't know, dating apps are just hilariously broken. Because like, the same shit is like, both girls and dudes have like, the most typical profiles of all time. For every like, gym rat picture of like a dude's shirtless picture, there's a girl sitting, putting her butt on the sink while Meg the Stallion is playing in the background. Like, for every fish on a boat picture or whatever white dudes take, like, I don't know what y'all pictures y'all take. But, like, there's a fucking girl drinking an overpriced IPA with all of her friends laughing prettily at a joke that wasn't said. I don't know. I just, I just want my shorty, you know? I just want, like, a shorty at the end of the day. You know, when we first start making love, she looks me in the eyes right before I take her to bed, and she goes, Yeah, see? 
You gonna fuck me like this and make me come, see? You gotta fuck me hard, really, 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 really hard to make me come, see? Hey, I'm about to come, see? <laughs> yeah, that's all I want. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, anyone else? I'm, like a diet psychopath on bipolar? Anybody else? Like, anybody else? I don't know. I think of being bipolar as like having like two different like like voices in your head, you know what I mean? I don't know, there's a negative voice and a positive voice. There's the, the positive voice, for some reason, like everybody else is different, but for some reason my voice is just like, like cartoon characters from the 90s, you know? It can alternate. It'll either go from like Donnie from Outdoor Bears or Ed from Ed and Eddie, like the positive voice. Like I don't know what he's saying and it's probably a dumb idea, but like he's not really a The negative voice though, the negative voice is Harold from Hey Arnold, but instead of calling me stupid kid, he calls me porch monkey for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Let's see what else. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm on Instagram looking at that. It's my fault, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, she got a fat ass. All right, yeah, I'm in time. <laughs> Amen, Anderson, everybody. Oh my gosh, we did it. We did it. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming to Home Sweet Home. We do this every first, third, and fifth. Tuesday of the month at 9 o'clock p.m. Thank you, Comedy RBA. You're the best ever. Thanks for having me. I'm sure do love you. And uh, thanks, Silver, for being here standing the whole time. And uh, guys, let's uh, go drink beer downstairs.